Hello and welcome to another video on this channel which will be all about SEO, search engine optimization. And I'm going to show you how you can rank your content in the top 10 of Google, which is roughly the first page of the Google search results. And I'm going to make this video practical as I'm about to show you how I create a new article for my homepage and how I go about ranking it in the top 10. So at least that's the goal because I will first have to wait and see. SEO takes time and you should usually give new content a few weeks or even months until it really ranks in the Google search results. So it can be faster sometimes, but yeah, usually it takes time. But before we go about creation of the content, we also have to talk about some SEO basics. So first of all, you need a homepage and ideally it should be based on a flexible system like for example WordPress, which allows you to do various optimizations to your homepage and it also allows you to apply different SEO tactics. So services like for example Squarespace are usually much more limited. Also, I often look at yeah, homepages of other photographers and what I find most of the time is those homepages are not very fast, especially when viewed on mobile. And the speed of the homepage is really the first thing you should get right if you want to consistently rank your Google or your content in Google. Which means you want to fulfill Google's core web vitals. If you use something like WordPress, it is an achievable task. Select a fast host, keep the number of plugins low and choose a minimalistic theme that doesn't bring a lot of clutter. I read that Cadence and Astra are themes that really fast and lightweight. But if you want to get really hands on, you can head over to my GitHub and use my homepage template up here. That's my GitHub page and there's the homepage template and it will give you the most customizability and control even more than with the typical WordPress plugins and themes. But it will also require web development knowledge. And yeah, my homepage is based on this template and I've developed it over the course of the last three years. So consistently improving it and with it, I can fulfill all technical requirements for a robust and fast homepage. And I continue to tweak it as I learn more about SEO. So the question now is how do you find out if your homepage fulfills the core web vitals and what exactly are those? For it, you need an account for Google Search Console. It's maybe the most important tool for your SEO journey. And once you've linked your homepage to the console, you'll get an overview about organic traffic and about how it fares in terms of web vitals. So I've brought up here page experience for my site. And to see that a few months ago for mobile, I didn't have many good URLs being served. And the reason for that was one of the web vitals, it's typically it's speed. So your homepage has to be fast. This was already fine for desktop, but the problem for mobile, those limits are more strict and I had to optimize to get beneath those, which is what I did. And since then I'm Seeing here, web vitals are good and those others, mobile usability sometimes have one site sneaking in, which means there's some link target too small. But yeah, that's not too bad. The important thing is your core web vitals. If you would have hundreds of pages showing up, mobile usability issues, I would look into it, but one or two is typically not too bad. And you also see here, I had a little drop also for the desktop, which was when I implemented a new cookie consent form. This cookie consent form caused cumulative layout shifts, which is when you head to a page and suddenly the content jumps a bit. This is also considered bad practice. And yeah, I also had to improve this. So typical things which you want to check, you can also see those with another tool from Google. So in case you don't have good web vitals, what you can do is check the individual pages that have bad signals here and test those with page speed insights. So with this tool, you put in your homepage. It will first, if you have enough traffic, give you an overview of how your homepages have been experienced by others. So if you have a lot of traffic, you'll get this for individual sites. I don't have that much traffic. So this here is a summary of all my homepage. And what you'll also get is a report. So there's a test being run from some server accessing your homepage and it will check the speed of your homepage and some other things. 
This tool is very valuable because it will tell you, for example, I have pretty good marks, so 98 for speed and all those others close to 100. But a few years ago, those were maybe around 50 or 60. And this told me I had to improve. And if you have low numbers here, if you scroll down, you usually get a list of what you can improve. For example, here, it tells me my images aren't in the right dimension, which is, I use images with a long side 1280, but here my content is actually just, I think, 1024 wide. So Google now tells me, hey, why do you have the images bigger than you actually display them? The reason for me is if you go to my galleries, for example, there's a full screen mode, which is when I display the larger images. But this is something to consider. For example, let's say you want your images show up biggest size on 4K monitors. So you think, yeah, let's use 2000 or 3000 pixel wide images. But in the end, most of your traffic might be coming from mobile. And if you serve those big images on mobile, this is very bad user experience because your homepage will load forever on those devices. And there are techniques to serve different sized images for different sized devices, which you can apply or you can just use smaller images. Yeah, and that's some of the basics. So use Google Search Console, make sure you have the web vitals right. If not, use PageSpeed Insights here and analyze your site. You can also use Chrome. In Chrome, you have a profiler which gives you a similar results and there are also ways to get much more into the details, basically see how your page loads. But this goes beyond what this introduction here is about. Let me know if you want to learn a bit more and I can maybe make a follow-up video. Okay, now with the basics out of the way, let's look how I can create content that ranks in the top 10 of Google. So since I have a relatively small homepage with not that many backlinks, so I haven't been featured that much. I'm not very active on social media. My domain authority is in the lower thirds, so I think something around 35 or so. So it's a good homepage, but traffic that I want to generate via Google search cannot happen through very generic keywords. So keywords like, for example, just Indonesia, in this example would not work for me because the competition is much too big. So Indonesia landscape, already a combination of two keywords, might also be too generic. But for the use case I have here, Indonesia landscape photography, so targeting photographers that want to travel to Indonesia and photograph the landscapes, they might use this search term. I wanted to make sure to be on the top and I wrote an article in my blog, actually two articles which rank very well. So you already see here are photos from those articles. And if you scroll down here, you have Savannah, Indonesia landscape photography. That's an article by me. And down here directly Java, Indonesia landscape photography guide. So I have two articles in the top 10, which is also very unlikely because normally Google will just show one of those. So sometimes it's just one of those showing up in the search. So I have a little bit of link cannibalization, how it's called here, but still I have an article right on top and also images right here at the beginning, which is great, even though I don't have a too big homepage. And yeah, now what I want to do, I want to write an article about Bangkok. Because I also visited Bangkok for some days, I took photos, I want to share those, but I don't just want to write a random article, I want to write an article about Bangkok that people will search for and find also in the top of the Google ranking, so preferably in the top 10. And yeah, now I want to show you how I go about it. So basically trying to achieve the same I did here for Swana Indonesia or Java Indonesia Landscape Photography Guide. and. First thing, let's just check some keyword combination somebody like me would use for Bangkok. So I actually used it, so Bangkok photography. Another thing, Bangkok photo spots would be something and see, first of all, what we get there. So it's mostly photo spot centric articles about Bangkok and gives me an overview about the content. I can now look at those articles, just get an idea about their content, what they talk about, how long they are, and maybe also get a bit of an idea how focused they are on those keywords, what other keywords they use. But beyond that, there's also something I want to figure out. For example, how much volume can I expect for a keyword? So for this, there are different free SEO tools, which I want to show you. So here we have SEMrush, 
which is as an SEO tool, you can sign up for free and you get some limited access and some free SEO tools. And for me, perfectly fine to use the free site and they have this keyword magic tool. And you see here for the database, so for somebody searching the United States, I wanted to see Bangkok photography. First of all, what other keyword combinations there are, what's the expected volume. And here you get a list and you see the volume is actually for Bangkok photography, it's not that high. So it's like just 20 searches here. And you also see there are some other combinations which I might use in my article just to extend this volume a bit to get a few others. And another tool I like to use is Seeability. It's also free, also has a keyword research. And here you see that Bangkok photography has a volume, they suggest 90, so it's a bit more. But they also say, okay, Bangkok photo has more. And then there are again different other keyword combinations. I can look through and see which of those apply to me, about which of those I could write or which of those I could try to rank as secondary keywords. But I think still Bangkok photography would apply the most to what I have. So I'm not somebody who first does a keyword research and then tries to come up with content for the keywords with the most traffic and where the competition is low. I just happen to travel, I take photos and at least for the place I visit for the photo that I take, I want to write articles that rank on Google. So even though the search volume is not very high, it accumulates. So if I have like 50, 60 articles, which are about different places, about photographing those places, they all rank in the top 10, I still get quite good traffic. At least that's the idea. And yeah, once such people, photographers most likely get onto my homepage, I can try to have links to my tutorials and maybe also other resources on my homepage from there. So the final tool I want to show you is Moss here. They also have a free account and they also have a keyword research tool, keyword overview. And here you get again, a little varied overview. So Bangkok photography, monthly volume 11 to 50. The estimation is somewhere in between what SEMrush and seeability give me, but also it's not that high. Difficulty is rated quite low, but lower third here. And what's also interesting, they again have some other suggestions. For example, you see visit Bangkok 140, but that's more going into the tourism section. And I don't think that I can rank there. You can also go here to see all suggestions and then you get a little bit more overview. And if you scroll down, you see they have a lot of suggestions and you see also there are a few with a very high estimated volume, but those are keywords that I can't rank for because my content is not focused on that. So I don't worry too much about it, but those keyword suggestion tools are still good to get an overview and maybe see some other photography related keywords. I could try to also rank with a well-researched and good article. So yeah, those three tools give me an idea what you can do with, for example, this SEMrush or seeability is if you have a free account. After having this overview, you can go to the dashboard and from there you will find a keyword tracker tool. So let's go there. So this is kind of a keyword monitor you have here and you see I have a few keywords already here. Exposure blending Photoshop, focus stacking, landscape photography, time blending, seascape photography tutorial, which are all keyword combinations I already rank for and which I like to improve. And I can just add another term here, which is, first of all, I select google.com, generates most traffic. And then I add the term Bangkok photography, which is the term I like to write an article for and I like to rank for, and then I save it. So first of all, it will now browse and check if I already rank for it, which will not be the case, but that's fine. Once I have the article online and then give it a few more weeks, at some point I'll hopefully see my page popping up and you can do the same in SEMrush, for example. And I'm sure you can also do it somewhere here in the Moss, maybe on the ranking keywords. I haven't looked too much into this tool yet. But yeah, all those tools are free to some extent and yeah, combining them can give you a bit of an overview what you need to do when you write an article. And yeah, that's actually the next step. So writing the article 
And I'm gonna do that now and then walk you quickly through some of the things I do once I have the article finished, how I polish it and how I make sure that it will rank for the keyword I have selected. Okay, so since the video is already dragging on a bit, I've decided to make a cut here and split it into two parts. So up until now, you've learned about some of the basics of SEO and how to get your homepage into shape to fulfill some of the technical aspects of SEO. I also talked about the way I do keyword research, which is not the most sophisticated way. So you can get much more into the details if you want to. But yeah, as I said, I usually get the topics I want to write about from my travels. And then what I want to do is just make sure that the content I create ranks on Google. Well, if you like the video, leave a thumbs up and yeah, stay tuned for the next one, which will be up shortly. And this video will then be all about the creation and the optimization of the content. So till then, see you.